Okay, today we're looking at the Redel CCP 1116 commentators panel. John, uh, why don't you turn your mic on and join the discussion here? Oh, I could go on air like that by pressing the button. Indeed, you are now on air, as am I. The first thing we need to know about this, or the first thing you need to know, is that this is actually not connected to uh, a Redel matrix at the moment. This is running absolutely standalone. It is. Which already demonstrates the first thing you need to know, which is what happens if you're using it as a commentary box and the system to which it's attached falls over. The answer is it keeps going. Yeah, and in fact, you know, you, all, all your basic sort of functionality on air and uh, indeed your cough button <coughs> still works. So those, those of you who are watching very carefully would have noticed that uh, the button even changed colour, uh, which is, a, is it's one of just a number of nice architectural features about this There device. are a lot of nice things about this, mm. in particular uh, visually, like, you know, for something that was probably designed by an engineer, it looks appealing and, and it's... Its usability uh, is fantastic. Um, you'd, you'd pick the pedigree because this, this looks exactly like uh, the, a standard Riedel tabletop... Director's um, panel. Director's panel. Like with the wings. one you're looking at now. Mm. Uh, the wings allow a commentator to do things that you want to do. So we've already seen we can turn the microphone on and off and you've got a cough button. There's a little LED that shows you your level. And then there's a series of uh, essentially headphone feedy knobs. Yeah, exactly. And so, for instance, I've got a button here which enables me to adjust the level of John's microphone into my headset so I can turn it on. And, and note that into his headset. You've also got the ability to adjust how much of you appears in your own headset. So you That's can essentially knob down. balance for your own voice and for the other commentator. Mm. Neither of those knobs affect what is happening on the feed to the audio desk. No, and indeed there are a couple of different ways you can actually get the feed off the commentator's microphones. You can, you can use standard three pin XLR mic input and uh, obviously you can apply phantom power and uh, various gain settings to that. You can also use a four pin headset if you prefer or I probably tend to go with something that had uh, a better mic capsule the, the if four, I was using it for headset broadcast. Would be, yeah, that'd be more useful uh, for those situations in which you just want to use it as, say, a director's panel. Put, put your mic back where it belongs. <laughs> use it as an ridiculous. intercom panel. Well, you know, we thought we'd do this with the right headsets. By the way, headsets are actually quite uh, quite comfy and mm. uh, quite adjustable. Um, and and the good uh, the good comfortable and uh, noise excluding headphones. Yeah, and that's important because typically the environments where something like this is going to land is going to be you know in the commentary position mm. at a stadium. You know when you've got forty a, to sixty thousand people worth of noise, of noise around you. Um, it's kind of important to be able to reject that not only into your own ears but also into the mic. Mm. Um, hence the popularity of lip ribbon mics, which you can use. With exactly. This. So uh, with, with this device, uh, when it's not connected to the Riedel matrix, you have the option not only to listen to yourself, send the audio out, and you can send the audio out um, directly or you can send a combined feed. So this device is actually doing the mix that you're hearing right now inside Correct. the box. Yep. There, there are a number of ways you can pull these various signals out in analog as well as via, obviously, a, a matrix connection to an artist system. Yeah. Uh, the, now, the, on the back of the panel, there are switches which allow you to uh, adjust how the microphone works, set its gain, turn phantom power on and off, and then switches to set what feeds appear in what ear. So you could have your voice appearing in the middle, somebody else's voice appearing on the side. You can have um, an ISO feed or an auxiliary feed coming back on one side or the other, or indeed have, have your can split so that you've got different things in different ears, all of which makes this a, a really useful device as a standalone panel hmm. for radio or television. It's, it's really the embodiment of everything you want in a commentator's panel. Yeah, now, one step go going beyond that step of standalone is obviously when we look at the... Uh the matrix integration and we've got the standard sort of Redel OLED keys mm. and, and these are lovely and these are beautiful displays. Very simple to understand. You'll have you know, a director's feed here and you can turn the director up or down or you can push on the pot to mute them. Mm. And you can also uh, configure these keys via the matrix system. So when you press a key, for instance, it can punch out an RS-232 or an XML command. Um, so for instance, you could use this to cut different vision feeds to the, the commentators. That, that's a function of the Riedel intercom system in which 
pretty much any button can be configured to do anything. Mm. So one obvious way that you might use this, for example, uh, just imagine you're at a racetrack where the audio from the headset is coming out and going off to television land, but you also want a button where you can talk to the director, in which case you can program the button to mute the microphone and feed your audio through well, to admit, the intercom. It mutes the on-air output of the mic and then feeds well, it to the intercom. Well, essentially, yeah. if you're there, bang, you've just you've just muted yourself, taken yourself off air and talk to the director in one mm. go, release the button. But, but you could nice program thing... another button that connected you or disconnected you from, say, the course PA mm. so that you decide when you're talking to the PA system as well as, as talking to the van. Exactly. So, look, there's, there's a lot of flexibility. And I think with that, kind of configurability you know there, there comes a learning curve and there comes a responsibility to understand and plan what you're doing or but for whoever's doing the configuration yeah exactly yeah. but as long as it's planned correctly the, the the capacity of this is is quite phenomenal yeah and, and once you've got this connected to uh to the matrix um you can then participate in a media or net system so you can have the audio appear anywhere across the network mm-hmm. it can come out of the matrix as analog or aes or MIDI or avb so you can use avb to send the microphone signal from this to a front of house desk and a, another desk pretty much any way you want to very mm. very effective as a standalone device, you know, would you spend the money just to buy this? You know, it's built like a truck. It's when you connect it to the real infrastructure that... That's when the value really that's, starts That's to when happen. you really see the value. Yeah. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, really impressed. 